Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we'll be talking about melodies for chords or creating melodies using harmony in a major key. All right, well, so what are we talking about here? Well, do you remember this song? Mary Had a Little Lamb? How does this song work? Well, let's sing it. So we've got Mary had a little lamb, D, 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 three, five, five, Changing the lyrics so you can sing the scales with me. Let's do that again. So you've got three, two, one, two, three, 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 two, 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 three, five, five, three, two, one, two, three, 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 two, two, three, two, one. Okay, so those are the scale degrees. I was singing it supposedly in the key of C. I didn't check, <laughs> but we can see it's in the key of C. And we can see that one is the tonic. Okay, cool. Well, we've talked about chords and we've talked about how chords can be implied as well. So what chords are implied here? Well, the first measure has a scale degree three and one on the strong parts of the beat. So the strong parts of the beat are the most important. That would be one, two, three, four. One is the strongest, three is the second strongest. Both are considered strong, but one is the strongest. Okay, so you've got three and one on the strong parts of the beat. Well, then what's on two? Well, on two and four, that's scale degree two. These are on the weak parts of the beat. These are called passing tones. So on the most important beats, we hear three and one. On the weaker parts, we hear this passing tone connecting the two back to three. So consequently, what is being implied is a one chord because the one chord is made up of one, three, and five. So let's take a look at this with chords. And so now what we hear, or what we see, excuse me, is a one chord backing up the beginning part of the melody. Let's take a listen. So here's the first measure of Mary Had a Little Lamb. Sounded okay, right? So using the same process, we can find the rest of the chords. Well, we see that we have a scale degree three only in measure two, that's a continuation of one. In the next measure, we see two. Well, two is the fifth of the five chord. Remember, it's the you have the root third and the fifth for any chord. The root here starts on five, so you have the third is the se is the scale degree seven. The fifth is two. Well, that's an implying chord five, which takes us back to one. And you can see this is one because you have three and five up here in the corner on that measure, which is again two of the main notes in the one chord, and so on. It continues where you, this is a repeat essentially of the first two measures, although you've got this little extra three here. And then you have, this looks pretty similar to up here, coming down to one. Let's hear how this works. So here we go. Here's Mary Had a Little Lamb with chords. Okay, well, so we've got an idea of how the harmony relates to the melody and perhaps how the melody was created. Well, there's some other points here though that I'd like to point out. Notice that most of the notes in the, in the melody, in the measure, are taken from the associated harmony. So if we grab the pen here, and we see, as I said, on the strong beats, we had three and one. Well, those are the root and third of the one chord. Cool. Three, three. If you remember, these are passing notes, the two and the two. But two here, all of a sudden, is the fifth of the five chord. And on it goes. The predominant notes, or the ones falling on the strong beat, or that make up the majority of the measure, are associated with the chord. Cool, well, what else? Well, it also starts and ends on a one chord. We can see this here. You've got the beginning and end. This is of starting and ending on the one chord 
creates and establishes the key. It's a general rule. Rules are sometimes made to be broken, but not at this stage. We're just trying to get into it. Okay. Additionally, it starts on scale degree three and ends on scale degree one. This matters because it helps show a trajectory and that there's a closure at the end. Scale degree one only occurs on a downbeat at the end of the song. This helps, again, to show arrival to home. What's also interesting is that it's approached by descent from three. So what I mean by this, well, that descent allows us to feel like there's a solid arrival. This comes from something called Shankarian analysis. I wouldn't get too concerned about what that is, but it's kind of interesting to see da da dum. That's a typical way to end a song. It's not the only way, but oftentimes you'll see that to end a song in a major key. Also, notice that it varies steps with leaps. So you have steps here. Da 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 dum. It steps down again just a little bit and then it leaps up. So you have a variety of steps and then a leap. We see this here that instead of leaping, it just has steps, 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 and then it curves down to end there. So you have this kind of dramatic little leap and then it's a calming song, it's kind of a lullaby. It also notices that down is balanced with up. It starts to kind of curve down, leaps up. Then it kind of curves up and then curves back down. These are just observations. Something to consider if you're working on a melody and something doesn't feel right. This is the arc that a melody often has. Let's look at another example, Jingle Bells. Here we have uh, the song in B flat major. So there's two flats and we can, once we write out the scale, we see, oh, we've got a B flat key signature and it starts on three. I don't know if I'm in B flat, but I'm going to sing in three. <laughs> All right. So one, two, three, B flat. So you have three, 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 D, three, five, one, two, three, four, 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 three, 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 two, two, three, two, five, three, 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 three. Three, five, one, two, three, four, 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 three, 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 five, five, four, two, one. You can put the lyrics to Jingle Bells in there if you want, but you get the idea. Now let's take a look at how this relates to harmony. In the first four measures, you see a one outline. You've got the three, stays on three, then you have five and one. That is the one chord. Then you have this little passing note of two taking you back to three. Notice that the one occurs not on the strongest beat. Okay, here I am with arrows, just to kind of outline. You have three, five, three, and one. <coughs> and as I said, the C is the passing tone on the weak part of the beat. Meanwhile, at the fifth measure, we see we have the root of the four chord. Well, the fourth scale degree is E flat, the fourth chord in a tonal, uh, in, in a major key is E flat. So here we have four being outlined. There's that E flat. Now what's interesting is the E flat at the next measure, the sixth measure, is what's called an accented passing tone or a suspension. Just call it a passing tone for now, uh, but it's not part of the chord. It creates a little spice to a chord that is really based on one as it returns to three, which is where we started. So you're kind of returning to home. Although what's interesting is you're not at one, you're at three. Remember how we talked about previously? You start on three and you end on one? Okay, if you don't know what I'm talking about, we'll see more in a little bit. <laughs> or rewind. <laughs> okay, now in the seventh measure, we see something similar to what the E flat was in the sixth. It, the D is again, a type of accented 
passing or neighbor tone. It's not part of the chord. What's being outlined instead is the five chord as we have the second scale degree and the fifth scale degree, which is the, uh, this is the root here of the chord five and the two is the fifth of the five chord. Okay, so let's hear the harmony. That's the key signature. That's one going to four. Hear that sweet sour of that E flat against the B flat? It's kind of like, eh, da, da. that's what keeps the song interesting. Let's listen to that again. The five chord, had it take us back to one. Still one the whole way through, four. Back to one. Cool. Notice how that note kind of makes the song. Okay, so let's talk about the song a little bit. Again, what we notice is that most of the notes in the measure are taken from the harmony associated with it. Three, well, that's the third of the one chord, right? One, three, five, that literally spells the one chord. Four scale degree, that is the root of the four chord. No surprises until we get to here. That's that passing note, that kind of the accented passing note that makes it kind of spicy. We'll talk more about that in a second. Also notice that it starts and ends on the one chord. This is to show where we begin and where we end. Additionally, it begins on scale degree three and only play scale degree one on a downbeat at the end. Notice that this is kind of a strong beat, but it's not as strong as that. For the most part, we just see three throughout. And we only see one on a downbeat at the end. This helps show closure. Now, it is important to note it could start on another scale degree in the one chord. It could start on the five. It could even start on the one. But the important thing to note is that the scale degree one only occurs at the end on a downbeat. Or if it happens at the beginning, it only occurs once at the beginning and once at the end. Make sense? Okay. Additionally, notice that it varies with steps with leaps. We see here that it leaps up and leaps down. Then you have this step words up. And then we see steps kind of up, down with a leap. Keeps it interesting. Very static, very static. Again, leapy, leapy. Oh, here's that step. And then we have steps leaping down home. Maybe like the horse ride? I don't know. But it keeps that interest alive. Additionally, we see up, a down motion balanced with up. But eventually you see this arc where it goes from three down to one to help us feel like we've arrived down home safe. So in general, what we saw, most notes in the measure are taken from the associated harmony. It starts and ends on the one chord. Those two songs we saw start on the scale degree three, but ended on one. But like I said, it could also start on another scale degree in the one chord. Scale degree one only occurs on downbeat or beat one at the end. Or if it does start on the scale degree one, it only plays it again on a downbeat at the end of the song. There's a variety of steps and leaps, and down motion is often balanced with up. Although eventually there's this arc where it kind of rises and falls back to one. Let's give this a shot. So here I am, this is an assignment I turned in. Let's make this a little simpler. I'm just gonna do half of this. So I'm gonna take this measure and delete it. Oh, let's take that measure out. In fact, I'll take these measures up. We're gonna start with just a four measure melody. Okay, you can see I've got this in the key of D major. One of the things to remember is how to add uh, parts. So come to the parts. 
I'm going to need a piano part. Now, this happened to a student, and I felt terrible, and I didn't really have a solution. But right now, we only have a treble clef. We need a treble and bass. So I'm going to add a piano, and I'm going to copy this line, Control-C, to the piano part. And then I'm going to delete the first piano. There we go. OK. Notice, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is the key of D major. And now what I need to do is add the uh, the notes of D major, or the chords to D major. But it sounds minor until I add that sharp. OK, and now I'm going to add the lyrics. So we've got, uh, excuse me, in the lyrics, we've got 5A, 3F sharp, and 1D. Okay, and we want to do this here. Uh, we are now on the E. This part is a little goofy. I don't understand why it's so difficult to. Okay, great. So now I'm going to again put the letters and the scale degree there. We've got. 6 E, excuse me, B, 4 G, and 2 E. Those are the notes and scale degree, scale degrees and notes, I should say, in the three chord. Oh, and here, under performance text, you would put 1. And this is two. All righty. So coming back to this again, we need the three chord. Notice it's already F sharp. That's because once you add an accidental to a measure, you don't have to add it again until you cross the measure. And then it returns to the key signature. Right now, there is no key signature other than C major, which has no accidentals. That is a key signature, by the way. It's just uh, the natural key signature, the implied, if there's no accidentals. So, but we do have F sharp, A, and you're going to hear something funny in a second. It doesn't sound right, right? That's because we need a C sharp. So let's add that C sharp to our chord. Uh huh. We have it. We've got the F sharp implied. I could write it down again just to be super sure, but it sounds the same. Okay, that's because again, the accidental's here, and unless you undo the accidental with a natural, it stays. Okay, so the lyrics here, and to get to the next line, I press return. So I've got uh, seven C sharp. I've got five A and I've got three F sharp and this is the three chord. Okay, here we go. Let's do that again. My little dinosaur child. So now we have a G chord. No sharps or flats there. Uh, so let's put in the lyrics. We've got five, excuse me, one D, six B, and four G. And this is, in performance text, the four chord. Making sense? Again, how I get the series of uh, lyrics is I hit return. Okay, and it's easier to do this one at a time. We've got four, let's do five. We've got A, excuse me, A. That's C natural. This should be a major chord. Yeah, the problem is we need C sharp. So click on it, add that sharp. Ah, there we go. That sounds like the major five chord. And let's add the notes there. So you've got E, which is two. So you've got 
2e, 7c sharp, and 5a. And that chord is the 5 chord. Making sense how to do this? A little refresher. Okay, now let's come over here. We need the 6 chord. Hear that? That should be minor and it's diminished. That's because we need an F sharp. So I'll add that and here we are. And so you've got three F sharp, D, or what, first scale degree one, and then you've got six B. A B minor chord is the six chord. And now we need the seven chord. Now it sounds like a C sharp because we've already added the accidentals. So once you add them to the measure, I know they're there. You don't have to put them twice unless it helps you. So I'll put it on there. So if I put C sharp again, it sounds the same. It's already diminished. You didn't have to put that. I just want to show you could if you wanted to keep it straight in your mind. But what we have here is the seven chord. You have four G, two E. And again, just hit return and it takes you to the next line of lyrics. And seven is C sharp. And the chord, if you go to performance text, is a seven diminished. That's why it has this funky sound. That's that diminished fifth for the seven chord. Okay, great. So here are the chords. We can delete this now because I want the chords to be with the scale degrees. We can delete. Oh, I need to delete the measure. So I hit measure and take it off. I'll do the same here. Yeah, so I want you to have the chords in the bass clef, the scale above, and then we're in the key of D major. So let's listen to our, oh wait, we need this progression. Oops. Well, actually, I'll just delete this because I'm going to be writing a melody there. And I'll take a one chord, copy it. I'm going to start with a one and I'll turn that to whole notes for now. And I think I had a four chord, copy that. Turn it to a half note, then I've got a five. Copy that, put it here. And then come back here. Wow, a lot of work to get started. But that's okay. Wait, actually, this is easier if I copy this one. So starting on one, ending on a one. Now, a shorter melody like this, you don't have to end on one. So, but for right now, I'm going to. Where do I want to start? Well, I could start anywhere. Let's do this. Let's try to find two notes that we want to hit out of the chord. I'm going to start on three. So that's F sharp. I'm going to find an F sharp. I'm going to make that a half note for right now. And that's going to go to an A above. Okay, now what? Well, I've got this and I could connect that with leaps, but then what's next? Well, what are the notes? We've got G, B, and D. Well, here's F sharp. What if I put a G here? Well, what's the next note in the chord? I could play a B. So I'm still going up. Eventually, I gotta get down where do I need to go? I need to get down to one. How am I gonna get up there? And so there's an arc. Right now I'm going way up. What if I leapt down to D? What does this sound like? Whoops. We've got. It's kind of leapy, but it's giving us kind of an arc. We're just picking a couple notes right now, and we can fill in the steps in a moment. 
We've got A, C sharp, and E to fill. Let's do this. Let's put E. And you know, it could be the same note. It doesn't have to always be a different note. So what if we did E, uh, do that a half note. So right now I'm just picking two notes just to D. So let's see what this does. I don't have any steps, but I could make some if I change this to a quarter note and add a G. What does this do? Play. All right, that's a short but pretty melody, right? Let's listen to it again. Now let's say you wanted to keep going, all right? So that's a short melody. You could do that for your four measure, but let's say I like this, I wanna keep going. Now note, I'm using the same key right now just so you don't have to watch me do everything over. But you're gonna to have to do the second longer melody in a different key. But let's say you got so excited about this one melody you wanted to keep going. Because why not? You, you could have two long melodies. You don't have to do two short ones. Okay, so let's keep going then. I'm going to add four more measures. And instead of ending on one here, I'm going to do something. I'm going to end on six. And that means all of a sudden, I'm not playing a note in the chord. Let's hear what that sounds like. That could be cool. Oh, yes, I am. That's kind of cool. So we get back to one, but that's a little trick I didn't totally explain. So we are at one, right? And it's on a downbeat, but it doesn't sound like home because the chord we're playing is actually the sixth chord. We have, let's just outline that harmony. Um, we've got one chord, four chord, five chord, six. I don't know if there's my progression from before. I think once I had it as six, went back to five. But what if I went six back to one? Let's check out my harmony again. And this time I'll come back to one. Let's see what the harmony is sounding like. Now remember, I already wrote a melody for the chord progression I was said I was gonna do. I'm now just excited and continuing on. This is how songs are written, by the way. Uh, but I'll do another one with the progression just in a second. Here we go. This is the progression. Da, da, da. I could go up to an F sharp. Do I want to do that? Hmm. I don't know. I kind of like that it goes down. Let's listen to it again. I think I want to start on it. Da, da, da. Now, if I start on a one again, what does that do? Hmm. I think I want to repeat what I had. Right? Because the rule is 
I can only play one at the end, so let's stick to it. Da, da, da. So I'm kind of repeating the melody here. But how do I want to change it? Ya, da, da, da. Maybe I could step down again. Da, da, da. Da, 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 da. What does that do? What does this do? Ah, so here's the chord. It's outlined with the G to a D. <clears throat> this is the root going down to the fifth. You have two passing tones. Ooh, pushing things a little bit, but the interval is outlining the four chord. And then I could use this melody again, because I know it works with the five, and actually arrive at the one chord. So we have some similarities and differences to keep us listening. Kind of fun, right? Okay, let's do another chord progression. Again, I'm going to do this in D right now just so you can see how it works. Um, actually, you know what? No, I'm not. I'm going to do the whole thing again, just in case there's some people who don't know how this works. I'm going to select it all and delete it. Okay. Yikes. Okay, let's just delete this part. I'm going to add another piano. I'm going to start in a different key. So you can see that, yes, I want different key. And I'm going to do a different key signature. I'm going to do this in the key of B flat. OK, so what is the key of B flat? Well, I got to start on D. No, B flat. So you have one, two, three. Major, major, half step. Uh, so when I said major, I meant major second, major second, minor second, major second, major. That, so major second, major, half, major, major. Major, major second to, should be half, B flat, okay. And so then for the lyrics, I go to La, and I select that palette here by going to text, just so you know. And I'll hide that again so I don't have to look at it. So I've got one B flat, hit space bar, you go to the next one, two C, Oh, it's okay if it's lowercase for now. Three, I'm going to put caps locks. D, four, E, you got to take it off though to do the flat. Uh, five, F, actually I'm just do shift. Six, G, seven, A, two, eight, A what? B flat, okay. That worked out well. Now I gotta write the chords. So again, I gotta get a B flat. That does not sound the same as that. Oop. That was a coincidence. Stop it. Stop it. So we go. Here that's not the same. That's B flat and I have a B, so I gotta put a B flat. Ah, there we go. Now I'm in the key of flat. So here we have 
in lyrics, we've you got to do la, you got to select the bass clef, and it's five F. You got to go from top to bottom. Three D. It's a little confusing how it writes it out at first, but one B flat. And then the performance text, that is the one chord. Okay. Then it kind of gets everything together there. The two is C minor. So you've got C, E, that sounds major. What's happening? Why does that sound major? Shouldn't be. Oh, I forgot. I'm in the key of B flat. So that means E is actually E flat. Great. So let's go uh, six G, right? Looking at the scale degree. The four, as I just said, is E flat. And the two is C. This is a C minor chord. Let's listen. Great. Now, this is the two chord. Here's three. So we have D, this will be a D minor chord. Great. I hear D minor, so all I gotta do, right? There's only two flats, B flat, E flat. It's D, F, A, great. So I've got um, seven, A, five, F, and three, D. Awesome. And this is, as I said, performance text labels the three chord. Great. Coming over here, let's go E flat. Now remember, I've got an E flat there, so I don't have to put the accidental again. But remember, it is an E flat. But what happens when I add this note? So stop it. Stop it. That's called an augmented chord because I've got a B natural instead of flat. So I got to make that B flat. Ah, that's right. I'm in the key of B flat. So if you look at the lyrics, you've got one B flat is the fifth of the chord. You've got uh, six G is the third. And again, it is the four chord, which is four E flat. And so let's write out the four chord in the performance text. One, Capital, right? Because it's major. Awesome. Okay, now we're getting the five chord. Five is F, 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 A, C, major. Great. And if you want, you could be looking at the keyboard. You can count. Oh, there's the major third. Minor third only skips two keys. Major covers three. Okay. Or it's really one, two, three, four keys away from where you start versus one, two, three keys away. Minor third, one, two, three, major, one, two, three, four. Okay, so we've got the notes of five C, excuse me, that's incorrect. Two C <coughs> is the fifth of the chord is what I meant to say. Seven A is the third and five F is the root. And if we go to performance text, we have the five chord. Okay, so we got the six chord. Let's do that again. Does that sound right? That's a major chord. It sounds pretty, but six should be minor. We are in the key of B flat, so ah, that's right. I need a flat there. Does it sound minor now? Look it, we've got it. one, two, three away from the root, and then we've got one, two, three, four. That means you've got the minor third on the bottom, which makes it sound minor, and a major third on top, which completes the chord, so you have a perfect fifth from the root to the fifth. Great, so the notes are three D, one B flat, and six G.
if you mess up, you can just arrange them. So we've got A, C, E. Oh, wait a second, we got a problem. This is a one, a minor third. We need another minor third. I need E flat. So let's go to E and make that flat. That's right, because that's the key signature. And notice, ah, that's key signature. So let's add those notes. E flat is four. We've got two C and seven A. Great, so now let's put seven diminished. I'm just putting a zero. Let's listen to our key. Now, some of you had just very simple progression, which is fine, of one. I'll turn that. Five. And then you add another five. Go back to one. Okay, and so if you put the performance text in there, you have one chord. You got to click it on each time, going to a five chord, five chord back to a one. Okay, let's listen to what that sounds like. So where should we start? Okay, well, let's start with the short melody. Let's start on the third. How about that? Oh, you know what? Let's do something different. Let's start on F. Okay, what could that take us to? Well, there's F in this chord. There we go. But I need another note. So what if I went F? D. Okay, I could do that because it's not the downbeat, but it is the one. No, it's not. It's the third. What am I saying? I can do that. It's fine. What if I add another one? Let's add another note. Let's change this one to a half note. Let's change this to a quarter. And let's... We've got some skips in here. Back to F. What does this give us? So we've got F is the one of the five chord. What if we actually went A, right? Because A is the second note. And then we went up to C. And maybe we could step there. We got da, da, di, da, da, dum. You see, I can struggle with this program too. So we've got a down arc balancing with up. We've got leaps with steps. The B flat occurs, but it's not on the downbeat. Ya da di da da da. What if we started on the third this time? Oh, but the third of the da da di da da da. Of the chord, so ya da di da da da. So let's listen again. Where could I go? Da da di da da da. Well, I could stay on C. I could go up to F. And then maybe stay on F. Okay, so I'm not ending on one. Like I said, for you don't have to end the short melody on one.
So ya da di da da da, then it goes back up. Ya da da di da da. What's nice about that is, let's say we we repeat these chords, and you all sound again. You're like, let's keep going with this. Well, now we could repeat this melody, kind of like what we saw Mary Had a Lamb for the first part of the, what's called a phrase, and this two, two measure thing that we've seen. But then we got to end it differently. <coughs> da, 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 da. Let's listen to it. We see that upwards. <coughs> we gotta get down to B flat. That's where we end the song. Ya da di da 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 da. What if we did this? Kind of like Jingle Bells, four, two, one. This works because it's what's called the seventh of the chord. But this is something I'm literally copying from Jingle Bells. Four, two, one. But you could also do this. I kind of like that one better. So let's listen to what it sounds like from the second half. Great. So let's analyze what we've done. We've got um, the 5F going to 3D. These are all chord tones, 1B flat. Now we've got the 7A, which is a new chord tone. This is a passing tone, 1B flat. And how I want you to write that is like so. This is actually what I want you to do. Uh, and then you've got 2C. That's a chord tone. So when it's not a chord tone, you see it's in parentheses. Now here we are. Oh, we got to do the lyrics again. This is 2C. Is this D part of the... No, this is a passing tone. So we've got um, 3D passing tone is E flat. Oh, actually kind of, but we're not gonna we're not gonna talk about it right now. E flat is four to five. F is a chord tone and then you have five F chord tone. Now if it repeats without changing, you don't have to write it. If you want to do it the next measure that's fine. And then you've got three B flat excuse me, D, one, B flat. You could have also just copied it at that point. Um, and that's okay, we'll do the practice. I'll just copy my own writing. You got seven, nope, seven A, passing tone. So you put it in parentheses, one, B flat, two, C. And we can put that again, two, C. This is a passing tone, D, uh, 3D. Here's the thing. When I said it's kind of a, not a chord tone, E flat could actually be considered a chord tone in this context. You don't have to do it right now, but it's what's called the seventh. But we're gonna treat it as it's not part of the chord, but. Actually, it is. Um, that's another day when we talk about seventh chords. But you have two C taking you back to one B flat. So let's talk about the assignment and outline it clearly here. What we're going to do is create two different melodies. One will be shorter and one will be longer. You will do that for two different progressions in two different keys. The shorter melody must be four measures in length. The longer melody 
must be eight measures in length. Four measure melody does not have to end on scale degree one, but the longer one does. The melodies must average approximately three mo notes per measure. That's not an exact, uh, like per measure, you must have three notes. But overall, it'll kind of look like that. You saw how I built uh, melodies by kind of finding guides and then going through it. But a lot of times there are only one notes per measure, but oftentimes there were also three to four notes per other measures. So that's how it'll kind of balance out. Be sure to label scale degrees and letters in each melody, much like I did in the B flat melody there. Also, show which notes are not in the associated harmony for that measure. And I skipped one here, but very important, melody notes predominantly in the harmony for that chord. I'm not saying all, right? Because some of the notes outside of that can sound really cool, but you want to use this as the guide and it'll help it sound harmonious. That's the point. Last but not least, very important, record a video where you talk about both melodies as you listen to it live on Note Flight. I want to know you did it, but I also want to hear you reflect on it in the moment. Okay, looking forward to hearing your melodies. Let me know if you have any questions.